In this video, I'm going to talk about inputs into Kinter, right? So how to um, basically get a user to input something and how to then do something with that input. But before I get into that, I'm just going to do the standard import. And by the way, in the next video, I'm actually just going to give you all this code preloaded because I think by then you've remembered it. So I get my import. I make my window and we say that the window is equal to TK as a function and that will create our giant window. Then we're going to define a function and we're going to call it on click. So if you've ever used JavaScript, you'll probably recognize on click, but if you haven't, doesn't matter. I'm going to create a label in here. So I'm going to say that when a button is clicked, that will create a label, right? I'm going to say that it's label, uh, not labage, label, not say, oh, it just looks like a J from there. Okay, that's fine. Um, we're going to use the window, so we're going to want to make it inside of this uh, TK window that we've called window as a variable. I'm going to say the text is equal to, um, I don't know, you've entered some text. Or we won't put that, we'll say you've clicked our button, okay? And we're actually going to put that label onto the grid. Now, we're not going to uh, simply just pack it on, because we actually want to try and create with this with some order. We don't want to just teach you how to pack. So we're going to put it onto the grid, and we're going to say we're going to put it in the second row. And I know that there's no second row yet, but just trust me, this will make sense later on and into column zero, i.e. the first column, okay? And then we're going to make a button, so we'll call it a button. I'm going to say it's equal to a button function, which creates a button inside of window. We're going to say the text is equal to click the button, and we're going to put a command onto it, so if you remember, we can actually uh, add functions to our buttons uh, by using this command parameter. So we're going to put the on click as our command. Remember, when you're adding the function, you don't need these parentheses. Okay? So just got rid of that. Oops. Don't need the parentheses. Okay? So there's our button. I'm going to say a button dot grid, and we're going to put the button before this label. We don't want the label to be appear. Above the button, we want it to appear below after clicking it. So we're going to say row is equal to 1 and column is equal to 0. Again, I know that we should start the row at 0, but it'll make sense when I add the input why I haven't done that. And then we're just going to have this window uh, dot main loop so that it runs slow. Okay, that's what you do every time you make it to Kinder. So try and remember this from now on because we've gone over this before. Like I said in the next video, that's it. Right, let's run it. So you can see here, simple sort of to Kinter interface. Just open it up a little bit here. There we are. And if I click the button, you will get this that says you've clicked our button. Once it's clicked, that's it. You know, it does nothing else. It doesn't add itself again because it already exists, right? It just kind of remakes that same variable in the same position. So it is doing something, but it's not a visible change because it's making the exact same thing appear in the exact same location. Okay, that's that's cool, I guess. But um, you're probably thinking, well, I see no input. All I see is a click button. Okay, that's fine. This is just me setting up the Tikinta. So I'm going to copy and paste all this. I mean, I don't need to actually copy and paste it all, but I'm going to. I'm going to run it separate from there. So we're going to call this the first loop, or the first main loop. And what we're going to add here after window TK is we're going to add an input uh, box. And basically, a user can input text into there. I think it comes out as a string. I'm not entirely sure. You can convert it into whatever. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. And it's they're actually called entry widgets into Kinter. I don't know why they didn't call them inputs, but they called them entry widgets. So we're going to say our input widget is equal to, and we're going to call it an entry, because it's an entry widget. We're going to say entry 
window, right? And we're going to say input widget dot grid, and we're going to put it on row zero, column zero. You'll notice that oh, that needs to be an equals. You'll notice that I put this as the first row. So basically, the reason why I had this is row one and this is row two is because I wanted this to be the first displayed item. So let's run this whole main loop and see what happens. Now you see you've got an input here. So I'm going to put a name. I'm going to put Yusuf, right? I'm going to click the button. You've clicked our button. That's great and all. Um, but there's a problem here. And the problem is that, well, I've just typed my name, but this name that I've typed into the input box has had no bearing on, you know, our output. So we really need to make this usable in some way. And there is a way to do this. So I'll copy and paste this again. I'm going to copy and paste this two more times, right? Copy and paste this here. And in order to get, um, sorry, the input from the user, we actually have to put input widget or whatever our, you know, entry, uh, entry widget variable name is here. And we put dot get. And this will actually get the value input here. Now, you're going to see another problem with this here. So let's just run that. I'm going to put again Yusuf. I'm going to click the button. Now, what's happened here is I've input my uh, my 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 value, which is Yusuf. I've clicked the button, but it's had no effect. So what's happened here is I've actually got this this variable value, this Yusuf value with input widget dot get, but I haven't used it with anything. So this time, rather than just making the input widget and have it do nothing. We can actually, we get this input widget straight after here, but we don't use the value anyway, you know. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to use that value, okay. So we're going to say that the text is equal to, we're going to, we're going to basically just copy and paste all of that. We've got all of that the same. The only difference we're going to make here is we're going to say input widget dot get. Where are we going to use that? We're going to use it here. So we're going to say that the text is equal to you've clicked our button plus input widget dot get. And so what's happening here is, or what's going to happen here is, our input widget, which we've put on, we're going to put some text into it. And then when we click the button, the actual unclick function is going to produce this label with the text. You've clicked our button. And then it's going to add to that text. I should put a space there. Whatever text that we've input or whatever we've input into our input widget, because it's going to get that text from us, right? So let's just close this one down. And let's run it again, right? Now, if I put Yusuf and I click the button, it said you've clicked our button, Yusuf. So what's happened here is we've made our input widget. We've put it onto the grid. Now, we've defined a method on click that does something when we click this button. And we've put this button below our input widget. Then when we click that button, this button clicking creates a label with the text equal to you clicked our button plus whatever this input is here. Because we get it and we add it to the text uh, attribute using input widget dot get. Okay, so let's change that to Yusuf. La 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 la. Yeah. There we go. Let's change it to be nothing. It just says you clicked our button. This is just a essentially a graphical error. Does you know it doesn't really know what's going on here. And it's just kind of just kind of screwing itself over there. I'm gonna put get. You clicked our button. Get. Yeah, it's. It's not perfectly implemented at all, but it works. And that's the main thing, right? Now, this input widget has, in addition to this, it actually has several uh, properties that you can add to it. Basically, you can add to it all the properties of the last one. So you can add to it, I don't know, foreground color. So we can say foreground is equal to 
red. So that's that's basically the text color. Uh, we can say BG is equal to blue. We can set a width is equal to, I don't know, 55, whatever you want, basically. But essentially, you know, this widget has similar properties that you can add um, as the label and as the button. All right. So let's try that one, a new fangled color. And there we are, we've got that there. So we'll say Harim is my new name. And there you see it's in red. And we're gonna say Harim Harim. How long will it take till we can break it? It'll break fairly easily, I think. Jeff. Let's say Jeff. Ah, Jeffrim. Jeffrim. So it's broken. I'm not sure why, but it's kind of irrelevant. All that I wanted to show you is that you can make these inputs. Um, you can get the inputs with the dot get uh, the input dot, the sorry the entry widget dot get function. But once you've got um, that input, you need to either put it somewhere. So I could put input widget dot get here and put it into a variable and use that variable later on. Or you know I need to do something with the get in order to change anything in the code. That's about it anyway. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you understood.